Hello astronomy class. So today we're going to be talking about Mars. In particular we're going to be talking about, or at least I'm going to be talking about, uh, what is all the fuss about Mars? Why are we spending a whole day on Mars? Why are all the space agencies around the world uh, spending so much time and money uh, sending things to Mars? Uh, so you guys will be learning in the readings I'm assigning to you just some general characteristics about the planet. Um, why it was named and its place in the solar system. Um, we'll be going over some of that, some of the stuff, but um, I'm mainly going to be talking about uh, why is Mars so important uh, right now uh, to the space agencies around the world and the scientists around the world. Um, so uh, Mars has had uh, most of the attention when it comes to things that we've sent its way. Uh, we've sent lots of rovers and lots of satellites, more than all the other planets in the solar system, uh, aside from the Earth. Um, so why is that? So let's look, let's look, about, look at Mars and its place in the solar system and talk about exactly why it is important to us. I missed an eight. <clears throat> all right, so let's look at some reasons why Mars is so important to scientists. Uh, so first of all, Mars is really close to the Earth's orbit. Um, the two closest neighbors to the Earth are, in terms of their orbits anyway, are Venus and Mars. Uh, now Venus is pretty hostile. The uh, atmospheric pressure is nine times what it is on Earth and is 900 degrees Fahrenheit on average. So if you're going to send any peoples or even robots to, to Venus, they would get crushed in a matter of minutes. And in fact, we have sent robots or probes to Mars. Uh, but again, they don't last very long. Mars, however, is a little more temperate in terms of what we can send there. We can send astronauts as long as they have spacesuits on, uh, as long as they're protected from radiation, and we can send robots because it's cold there and robots perform better in cold weather anyway. Um, so it's not the closest to neighbor in terms of orbits, but it's the second closest. So it makes it a good target for exploration. You don't have to sp spend as, as much fuel to get there as you do uh, some of the outer planets. Another reason to explore Mars is because it has very interesting geology. Um, uh, it has lots of canyons, lots of uh, volcanoes and mountains. Um, some of them are comparable to what we have on Earth and some of them are even more intense. Uh, a couple of examples we're going to look at are Olympus Mons, which is a Martian volcano, and Valles Marineris, which is a Martian canyon. Uh, Olympus Mons is a huge volcano. In fact, it's one of the largest volcano. It is the largest volcano discovered in the entire solar system. Um, you can you can see a picture of Olympus Mons with uh, a map of Illinois, Missouri, and Iowa drawn on top. You can see it kind of fits in that tri-state area right there. Very large volcano. In fact, it looks like the mouth of the volcano might be as large as the St. Louis metropolitan area. Uh, and it's twice, more than twice the height of Mount Everest, which is the uh, tallest mountain above sea level on Earth. Um, so it's very big. Um, and there is some evidence that it is actually active. Um, a lot of the geology is dead on Mars, but uh, there's evidence that Olympus Mons is an active volcano. Then Valles Marineris is a huge canyon. Uh, here you can see a map of the U.S. and the canyon goes all the way from California even past the eastern seaboard. So it's a very uh, large canyon. That's what it would look like if it was in the U.S. Uh, and one of the large can canyons in on Earth is the Grand Canyon. Well, this picture on the bottom shows you that, well, here's the Grand Canyon, that area right there. Um, and if, and here's Valles Marineris from the left side to the right side of the picture. So it's much larger than even our largest um, canyon here on Earth. And I don't think it's the largest canyon in the solar system, but it is one of the big contenders. One of the more interesting reasons, uh, geologically speaking, uh, that we would like to visit Mars is because there's evidence of surface water. Uh, now, a lot of the water that is on Mars is locked up in ice, um, either found below Mar Mars surface or on the polar ice caps, like on the, on the North Pole or the South Pole of Mars. But there are some formations that suggest that liquid water may have once flown on the surface. Um, take this for example, this is a river, what looks to be like a dry river delta. 
Uh, if you ever look at pictures of the Mississippi River Delta, it looks kind of like this. What happens is that the Mississippi River drags sediments uh, from the land and dumps it in the ocean and begins piling on and pile on until you have this huge river delta formation. And you see this all around the world, wherever rivers or streams meet an ocean or a lake. Um, and so there's no liquid water here right now, but it looks very similar to the river deltas that we have on the Earth. So why is surface water so important? Well, because any time that we have water on Earth in liquid form, there's almost always something living in it. Um, now, I'm not talking about like your tap water at home, but anytime you go outside and get some rainwater, water from lake or river, there's gonna be some sort of life in it. Even if it's not a fish, there's gonna be something like a microscopic type of life. So, so up on the upper right here, here's a picture of what plankton could look like in the sea if you put it under a microscope. Um, so there's the possibility of life, if water was once on Mars, that means life could have once been on Mars. Now currently, Mars atmosphere is too thin to hold liquid water. Even if we took a huge tank of water and shipped it to Mars and dumped it on the surface of Mars, that water would not uh, be there long. The Mar Martian atmosphere is too thin and the gravity is too weak to hold on to liquid water, so it would just slowly evaporate into space. Uh, however, if these dried out riverbeds and dried out river deltas are what they appear to be, it suggests that maybe one day uh, Mars had a thicker atmosphere. In fact, Mars' atmosphere is currently being stripped away by the sun, so if um, this is possible that one time Mars did have a thicker atmosphere, and allowed liquid water to be on the surface. So the question is, would that liquid water had a uh, life in it? Even if it's not fish, it would be really cool to just to find, you know, tiny microscopic life like plankton here on the right. Um, so what does this mean uh, for us? Well, this really helps us understand the origins of life. Um, or maybe not even not maybe not the origins of life, but at least the placement of life in the universe. So right now, so let's just kind of do a thought experiment for a second. Imagine you go to a grocery store and uh, you go to the produce section. You find that they have blue apples. It's so like okay, I've seen green apples, yellow apples, red apples. I've never seen a, a blue apple, maybe an orange apple, but never a blue apple. And so you kind of think to yourself, well, is this something rare? Uh, how hard is it to find a blue apple? Could I, uh, and so you would have no way of knowing if you could find blue apples in a different store unless you called a different store or uh, visited a different grocery store. That's kind of the same way it is on Earth. So Earth is the only known place in the universe where life exists. Um, we have, um, so if you, even if you take all of what you've learned about aliens, all of what you learned about uh, life and on other planets, we we can only be 100% sure that life has been found on Earth. Uh, but if we go to Mars and we find fossils or uh, maybe a tiny microscopic life form on Mars, that changes our thinking of the universe entirely. Uh, because going back to the grocery store example, uh, without stepping outside of that grocery store and looking for blue apples somewhere else in the world, um, you wouldn't know if blue apples exist anywhere else. And so Earth, since we're that Earth is the only place where 100% sure life exists, well, we have no way of knowing until we look everywhere we can for life. If life is going to be very rare, is Earth a very special place, or is it more of a common place? Uh, and is life common in the universe? That's kind of a big question for scientists right now. Is life very rare or is it pretty common? Um, because we found, we know that there are planets orbiting around other stars that are very similar to the Earth in uh, size and it's possible that they could hold water. Could that water also hold life? And so that that is one of the biggest reasons Mars is a very interesting target right now is because there's, it's possible that there is, or more likely was, life at one time on Mars. Um, 
but of course we won't really know until we uh, go and explore. But that's, so that's why there's a big interest in Mars um, is because it's close to us. It doesn't cost uh, as much to get to Mars as it does other planets. Uh, has a very fascinating geology. We can, if we can learn about the geology on Mars, we could also learn about the geology on our own planet or other planets. Um, and again, there is the, if, if water did indeed exist on Mars, it would have all the ingredients it would, ha would need to have life. It might not be intelligent life, it might even be large life, but just finding any kind of life on Mars would be um, uh, fascinating and we'd have a lot to learn from it. So uh, that's, that's why Mars is such an interesting target. That's why you hear about all these scientists excited about going to Mars, planning missions to Mars. Um, and I hope you guys have fun learning about the red planet today in class. Um, and if you have any questions about what I talked about, let me know. I'd be glad to talk to you or maybe share some of the resources with you. So I will see you guys later.